Mandi Zainal and we have Muhammad Faris Sufyan bin Sohaimi, Muhammad Arif bin Ruzaini, and also the only girl in this group, Shami bin Binti Abdul Kalim. Okay, before we dive, dive in uh, deeper, uh, I will explain about the project background. Okay, the Food and Agriculture Organization of the United Nations provides free access to food and agriculture data for over 245 countries and territories. Uh, it is from uh, the year 1961 until 2013. Uh, one data set from the FAO's uh, database is the food balance sheets. And the food balance sheet uh, shows for each food item the sources of supply and its utilization. This data set focuses mainly on two utilization of each food item available, uh, which falls by food and feed. Okay, for food, uh, food refers to the total amount of food item that is available as human food during the preference period. Then for feed, of course, uh, feed refers to the quantity of the food item available for feeding to the livestock and poultry during the reference period. Since animal agriculture and factory farming is a growing interest of the public and world leaders, our project would like to group countries together in terms of the similarity of their food production volume. Then we have the A1 section which is uh, searching data. Okay, for the data set, we have a total of 21,477 instances uh, which includes uh, 63 attributes and yes, it has a missing values. And the attributes, uh, they have uh, mixed attributes and also we can identify the class label. And of course, the data set, uh, we've got it from Kaggle uh, as the link provided. And now for the data understanding, which is KIMI, uh, we have approximately around 57 uh, attributes for numeric attributes. And this is the list over here. There's 57 of them. And then for nominal attributes, we have approximately, uh, approximately around five of them. Okay, now uh, we will go on to the handling attributes with uh, missing values. Since there are too many missing values from attribute from the year 1961 until the year 1991, which is approximately around more than 3,000 instances, we decided to remove those attributes before removing the missing values. So then we will work on the attributes of area, item, element, and only the range of year 1992 until 2013. And next, we use the mega filter of unsupervised to remove uh, uh, instance with values. And we set the attribute index to until first, uh, from first to last and it will only remove any instances that uh, has missing value. So that is why the match missing values is uh, uh, placed to true. And then uh, uh, because we've made that filter, our instance count, instances count uh, went from 21,000 until 20,000, which has a difference of approximately 1087. Then we save the data set into a file name file underscore clans AR, ARFF and also file underscore clean CSV to indicate that oh, and in this file we have uh, cleaned the data set. Next, handling attributes with noise and outliers. Okay, for identifying outliers, we will use box plot. To find outliers using box plot, we will use Python 3 in a Jupyter Notebook instance. Okay, first, as you can see, we import pandas to load the data set from a CSV file to a data frame object and matplotlib with seaborn to plot the graph. Uh, next, we instantiate a pandas data frame using pandas uh, read CSV method. And last but not least, then we use the head method on the data frame object to see the first five rows. So over here we use the head method, then we can display the five rows for the data frame. 
Okay, uh, to plot the first six years uh, from 1992 until 1997 using box plot, we first create a figure using matplotlib uh, pi plot figure method. Then we look through the range of years and add a box plot from C bond for each column with string format method for string in Python. Okay, we can see that there are outliers for each year, but we decided to not remove the outliers instances just yet. Instead, uh, we want to proceed to experiment with the clustering process and then decide whether we should remove them after getting the result. Okay, for the section A3, uh, for data preparation, or known as transformation, for this iteration, we will not do any transformation on the data set, and we will only proceed with the clustering process. Okay, so we'll begin our clustering process in this section which is the model development and also evaluation. So firstly, we are going to load the file that has been cleaned from missing values that we uh, under the name of file underscore clean. And then we're going to select the cluster tab. And then we are going to use a clustering method, which is simple key means. And then um, after that, we are going to remove, uh, we are going to ignore several attributes like area, item, element, area abbreviation, area code, item code, element code, unit, latitude, and longitude. So the reason why we decided to ignore this attribute because it doesn't have a meaningful values that, that we are going to use in our clustering process. Hence, uh, we are actually going to use um, attributes that, are, uh, that have the values of productions. And then after that, we are going to generate clusters uh, with the number of clusters from 2 until 8 because from the range of value, we are going to choose the best number of clusters using a method called elbow method. So elbow method actually is a way to pick the most suitable number of clusters. Next, we are going to plot a graph in Python where our y-axis is the within cluster sum of squared errors that are generated from Weka. And then the x-axis is the number of clusters that we have decided, which is from 2 until 8. And now we will create two different arrays. One is the number of clusters with values of 2 until 8. And then another one is squared errors with squared error values that has been generated accordingly to the number of clusters that we have selected. And then we are going to use matplotlib.pyplot to plot a line graph with O as the markers. So in the picture, um, in the picture attached below, um, there are two different arrays, which is num clusters and also squared arrays. And then um, figure size, we are going to use um, 12 by 6. And then we are going to plot our graph with a marker of O. And then we are going to label our x-axis by number of clusters and our y-axis with within cluster sum of squared arrays. Okay, so according to the graph that has been generated using Python just now, um, we are going to use elbow method to identify the, the best number of clusters uh, from within the within two until eight. So according to elbow method, uh, we should choose a number of clusters so that when we add another number of, of cluster, it won't give much uh, difference to the modeling of the data. So from our graph that has been generated, we decided to choose number of cluster equals to five because from cluster 6 until 8, it has a insignificant difference for sum of squared errors. So for example, uh, in our graph, um, why, we don't, why we don't choose uh, uh, the number of clusters of 4, 3, or 2 is because as we can see, uh, the differences uh, for sum of squared errors from 4 to 5 is quite bigger as compared to number uh, sum of squared errors from 5 to 6. So we decided to stop before the value decide um, before the value starts to become more distinct uh, than the usual. Hence, why we selected number of clusters equal to five instead of the the rest the rest of the values. So here's the result when we selected number of clusters equals to five. So here is the final cluster centroids. So it seems like we don't really get a meaningful clusters out of this data set because there are same area that are presented in multiple clusters since there are quite uh, many instances with the same area value. So in order for us to get a much more accurate and meaningful result, we are going to do data transformation processes. So in order to get um, more significant um, result, 
we need to reduce our data set. We need to remove some attributes uh, with the reason of redundancy and insignificance. So for item number one until four, we remove them with the reason of redundancy. For example, area abbreviation and area code are redundant with area, item code are redundant with item attribute, and element code is redundant with the element attribute. And for unit, latitude and longitude, we find it to be insignificant for our clustering objectives. Um, so we remove them too. Okay, next for the transformation part, we are going to construct two attributes which are named total food and total feed. Uh, and we are going to reduce some more attributes, which are the production uh, volume for each year. So we have an example here, what we are going to do. Um, say we have these three rows. What we want to ultimately do is we want to aggregate all the rows with the same area into one row. And, uh, and, they, and each of the rows have two attributes which are total food and total fit. So in this case, um, these three rows of Malaysia will become one row with area value of Malaysia and total fit and total food with the value of uh, the summation of all foods from all years and then all feet from all years. So we're going to see the example next in the next slide. Okay, so this will be our final transformation example, uh, for the Malaysia that we showed earlier, the total food will become 2000. Um, and it is the summation of beras, which is one of the food item in Malaysia in our previous example. Summation of beras from year 1961 to 1963. And then the summation of roti from 1961 to 1963. And then for total feed, it will be 550, which is the summation of jagung, which is the only um, item with element feed in our previous example from 1961 until 1963. So the technical specification of total food and total feed would be and for the total food it will be the summation of in our data set it will be the summation of 1992 to, to 2013 for each item where the element the element value is food and then for total feed the summation of 1992 to 2013 for each item where element value is fit and then we will do the, the same operation for all 166 countries in our data set so we'll be going through the process on how we do this in python okay so first uh, we want to create a pivot table which aggregates each uh, each year each sorry each area which is countries um, according to year so first we want to create a pivot table uh, from our previous data frame which uh, which were cleaned uh, remove missing values and all in, uh, with um, a pivot table method on the pandas data frame class we use the sum aggregate function to add all the feed and food values in a particular year so in the code section in the first um, line we create an array of columns so we create a list from the columns. We take all the rows and then we take from column four onwards because we have from the column one to the first to the third column is for area, item and element. So we take from the fourth column to the end, which is all the year values. And then we create a pivot table with the values of year list. This will be the aggregator. And then the columns of element the index will be area, which means that all the aggregation will become into one um, row for each area. And then we choose the aggreg fun aggregator function to be sum because we want to add all the um, values of the production volume. Then now we show the uh, first five rows using the head method. As you can see, Afghanistan has the feed and food value for each year summed up for all items. So next, we we will remove um, remove the level from the top, which is the year. So now we don't group the feet and foot by the year. Here we 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 will create the attribute that we want to construct earlier, which are total feet and total foot. It will be the um, 
So the f nu is the is our new data frame, uh, which is this one, and then for all column feed, we want to sum them into a new column named total feed. And then we can see that in the uh, right hand value, right hand side of the um, table, we have two new constructed attributes, which are total feed and total food. Okay. Next, we will remove all the duplicated columns, which are all the feed and food. Uh, column we see earlier, the attributes. We drop all the duplicated, duplicated column and then we will be left by just one feet and foot and then we drop them too. So in this in this process, what we did was we construct two columns which are total feet and total foot, which are the aggregation of um, the values for each area, for each element, feet and foot. And then we remove all the attributes year from year 1961 to 2013. And we, we, we are left with uh, 166 rows. And we have three columns, which are the area, total feed, and total food. So next. Okay, lastly, we export the data uh, to a CSV file named file reduce transform.csv. Then we will use this in the next process where we will do our second iteration of clustering. All right, thank you, Faris, for your explanation. Okay, we will move on on second iteration of our clustering, uh, the burner development and evaluation. After Faris has reduced the data and transformed the data, we will load the data, which is named file underscore reduce underscore transform. CSV and this is the our the first row of the data set. Okay, next we go to cluster and choose simple k-means for our clustering, and then uh, the third step we ignore the attributes area because uh, we want just total fit and total food, and then next we repeat the generation of cluster with the number cluster two until eight, and repeat what we did early, earlier with the elbow method. You can see that the values of square errors in this iteration is way lower than the values before doing the previous transformation process, as the Shamimi has explained. And the graph change of the gradient is also more neat. Next. So as we can see the elbow method here, we we use the same method, which is elbow method. Uh, we will use same method also, uh, which is num class, number of clusters, which is three, two, three, four, five, six, and 7. And then the square errors is uh, more small because the, we, use, we use reduce and transformation method. And then this is our graph. We will choose the number of cluster of four because after the class, number of cluster four, the values is more, more same. Okay, next. Okay, uh, so as we can see, this uh, final cluster centroid, which is a uh, cluster 0, 1, 2, and 3. As we can see, the cluster 1 is total food is 26 million, and the total feed is 8 million. And the cluster 1 is 200, and the total feed is 50,000. And then the cluster 2 is 2 million, and the total feed is 700,000. And then the cluster 3 is 10 million and total fit is 2 million. Uh, this cluster I will explain more in the result, result analysis. Okay, next. Now we can see the cleaner representation of the area and the cluster. You can see the cluster 0 uh, only has 2. And the cluster 1 is the all of the countries. Cluster 2 is the third, the third uh, this value. And then the cluster 3 is the second list value of the countries. Next. Okay, this is a result analysis. From the cluster central, as we can see, that the cluster can be sorted from the high to low according to the total food and total feed. So the first, the highest produce for total feed and total, feed, total food, which is, is cluster 0. And then the second is cluster 3. And then the third is cluster 2. And then the final one is uh, cluster 1. Okay, next. So the result analysis is, as we can see, cluster zero is, we can say that the countries in cluster zero are the highest producing countries for both, both food and feed, 
we have two countries in this cluster. The countries are China, mainland, and the United States of America. It's turned out the, that the outliers we got in A2 are the item production from these two countries. Uh, Nukman, can you revert to the image of Centroid? Uh, yes, uh, you can see the cluster zero, there are the only two countries, which is China and the American. Okay, uh, we revert to final. Okay, for cluster three, in cluster three, we have the second highest producing group with three countries, which is Brazil, India, and Russian Federation. Uh, we revert to the image back. And then you can see the cluster three has only uh, three countries, as I said. Okay, next. Cluster two is, in cluster two, we can say that the countries are developing countries. There are 22 countries in this cluster. Some countries in this cluster are Canada, Egypt, Italy, Pakistan, and Vietnam. And as we can see in, the, in this image, we get into the image. Okay, that's the cluster two. There are 22 countries in this cluster. Okay, the final cluster is cluster one. Finally, in cluster one, we have the most countries. The rest of the country, which is one, 139. Countries in this cluster produce the least item for food and feed. Some countries in this cluster are Nepal, Malaysia, Morocco, Sri Lanka, and Cambodia. As we can see in the image, that is the rest of the countries after the cluster 0, 2, and 3. And cluster 1 is the rest of the countries. That's it for our second iteration of the clustering. And this is our reference, we, which is the Kaggle Notebook, Kaggle Clustering for the country. And then we, uh, we choose Wikipedia for album method. Uh, back to Notebook. Yeah, that is all for our presentation. Thank you for listening.